हेलो सर एम आई ऑडिबल यस जितेंद्र hello good evening everyone uh, i welcome you all uh, in this uh, epic cycle 2020 rule book session so we will start the presentation uh, now give me couple of minutes
I hope my screen is visible now. Doing sir, can you confirm? Yes, Jitend. Okay. So this is a uh, rule book session two. Uh, in last session, we discussed uh, about uh, frame and uh, material related rules. So now today we will discuss other rules uh, for uh, conventional and advanced category vehicles. <clears throat> but before that, I would like to give some important updates. The revised registration guidelines uh, have been uploaded on our official website. So uh, there are some changes in the deadlines, uh, fees amount and uh, account details. So please. Uh, visit our website. The guidelines have been uploaded in the download section. So before you uh, register your team or make any changes in the already registered team. So read the guidelines carefully. Also read the message from convener on uh, virtual format, which is also available on website. So registrations are open till 20th June. This was already announced. So now let's start this and once again I would like to inform that I am using LEDs on the top of the screen uh, to differentiate uh, the applicability of rule for uh, conventional and advanced formats. So C uh, means conventional, A means advanced, green means the rule is applicable uh, and uh, gray means uh, rule is not applicable. So please take care of that. So now let's start with the, the rules explanation. So today uh, we will start with the seats. Seats are mandatory for uh, uh, FC cycle and uh, as there are two drivers, uh, there should be two driver seats which should be individual. There should not be a common seat like a bench seat kind of thing. And uh, the seat which is uh, the combination of three parts basically. One is the seat cushion or the bottom of seat where, over which uh, the driver is seated. Second one is the seat back uh, which supports our uh, torso or the back. And the third one is the headrest. For headrest, we have a uh, different rules, so they will be informed later. First of all, about the torso, torso support is mandatory. Uh, you cannot come with only the seat cushion, so the complete seat should be there. And torso should be <coughs> pro, uh, designed like uh, it should provide the support to torso uh, of the driver in the static and dynamic condition. <coughs> because uh, when the vehicle is in motion and drivers are putting the uh, effort on paddles, so the normal tendency is to lean forward. So in that condition, uh, the torso should be designed like uh, whenever the driver is trying to put force on paddles and having a tendency to lean forward. So the support should be present over there. So it is about designing the seat ergonomically so that uh, uh, most of you are using the reclined seats where the seat back is tilted uh, towards uh, rearward, rearward by some angle. That angle is called alpha. So alpha should be given such that the driver should be uh, in the rest condition. Driver should be resting uh, comfortably as well as when uh, the driver start pedaling. So then also he need not to bend or lean forward. So support should be designed like that way and uh, the rule for the height of torso is that uh, it should it should be uh, high enough and maximum two inch below the driver shoulders it can be uh, eliminated so the top of the torso should be just uh, below just maximum two inch below the driver shoulder it cannot go below uh, than that so these are uh, the rule for uh, driver torso.
and then uh, the seat cushion seat cushion should be uh, used and uh, the seat bag and seat cushion should be mounted on uh, frame using the mounting tabs and on the mounting tabs you, we can use the bolting the fasteners the nut and bolts uh, to fasten the seat on uh, frame using mounting tabs and do not make any drill or hole directly on the frame members frame tubings uh so that will be a ng condition a non compliance condition not good condition so direct uh, drilling on uh, frame members for uh, mounting of seat or uh, that is a basically a common rule which is applicable for all mountings you cannot make any drill or hole for mounting purpose directly on your members and uh, for advanced category uh, there is some change in the rule uh, which says that there should be at least four mounting locations uh, for the seat cushion so the bottom of seat over which you are seated seated so that should be uh, mounted on at least four locations four mountings so you can consider is that uh, four corners of the rectangle so this i was explaining that when the driver uh, leans forward the torso is not supported by the seat back so this wide angle comes in between the angular gap exists like that in dynamic conditions so try to avoid that here are some good example of driver seats uh, which can be used uh, as a uh, seat for fe cycle and these are actually in house fabricated seats by some teams and uh, these are very very lightweight uh, a frame is given over there and some uh, uh, on the left in the left picture the, you can see some wire mesh kind of thing i don't know which, if this is a rubber or some kind of threaded material but uh, this looks very lightweight and very comfortable and uh, on the right picture you can see some kind of uh, seat which is uh, uh, very beautifully designed and uh, it is having the cushions also the padding so that is uh, highly comfortable so teams can try to design these kind of seats which are very very lightweight so these pictures are only for example you can uh, design your seats with some other kind of uh, material and in different shape so just to give you idea these are the seat frame which are used in the uh, actual car seats so the frame is designed in uh, this manner where the frame is uh, just uh, uh, some member some metal frame is over there and then there are some solid members and some wire frames these are for the flexibility and uh, also to support the foam the foam which is uh, present over there in the car seats is supported by only these kind of wires so uh, you can see even the car manufacturer use these kind of very lightweight frame but as uh, there is a high amount of uh, uh, foam is there and also some adjustment mechanism are there so that's why the seats uh, are uh, heavy and also uh, by uh, uh, by the look they also uh, feel very heavy so normally the weight of uh, the car seat uh, ranges from 10 kg to 15 kg in actual cars and if the car seats are having airbags and um, and the electronic adjustment systems which are coming on uh, high end cars so this goes uh, till 20 kg also but you try to design a seat which is very very lightweight and uh, these uh, are only for reference to just to give you idea that car manufacturers also Uh, use uh, these very lightweight frames so as you are not having uh, any electronics involved uh, in this uh, in in your fe cycle seats and uh, airbags and uh, the bulky systems are not uh, present over there adjustment systems are not there so your overall frame weight and overall seat weight can be reduced to very high amount of uh, weight and you can target some weight let's say 
2 kg and maximum 3 kg for each seat or maximum 5 kg so that is just to give you idea so if you uh, reduce the seat weight uh, the overall vehicle weight can also be reduced uh, by a good amount of uh, uh, good amount of weight and then comes the seating position so as there are two seats uh, we can have adjacent seats adjacent means side by side so one driver in the left one at the right and uh, the another arrangement can be longitudinal longitudinal means in a line that means one sitting behind the other one so both kind of seat uh, arrangements are possible and uh, you can choose according to your uh, fe cycle requirement so that is totally uh, team's uh, strategy <clears throat> so but uh, try to uh, choose a seating position which gives you a uh, very comfortable uh, Uh, seating and uh, it gives you a, a compact vehicle uh, so there are advantages and disadvantages of both seating arrangements so if you have adjacent seating position you need a very uh, broad uh, track width and but you if you have a very longitudinal arrangement you need uh, a large uh, wheel base so both uh, having their uh, pros and cons so try to make your own strategy and also weight distribution and stability is affected by the seating arrangement a lot and uh, as the rear wheel is uh, the only single wheel over there so the weight distribution will also uh, impact uh, the stability or the durability of the uh, rear wheel and uh, apart from that uh, the bending of frame and the torsion of frame because uh, the board drivers may not be of the equal weight so if uh, we are having the uh, side by side seating uh, so if the one driver is heavy the com- the suspension will compress and if uh, driver on the other side is uh, lighter as compared to the, the first one so vehicle will be always in this condition similarly in the longitudinal position uh, if you have uh, the driver uh, for example this is the front and the front driver is heavy and rear driver is lesser so vehicle may be in this position or vice versa this can be uh, the uh, position of vehicles so in this way you can uh, choose according to your uh, seating position the strategy of uh, design uh, so while choosing a seat combination seating position uh, try to uh, give a thought on these parts these uh, parameters and uh, then we uh, come to the uh, seat adjustments so inclination of the seat back is one type of adjustment and uh, uh, so you can recline and uh, according to your comfortable uh, seating position you can recline your seat back and try to uh, sit, uh, get seated in a most comfortable manner so in this way you will not feel uh, fatigue or uh, tiredness uh, during the competition and uh, also according to the length of uh, or the height of the drivers uh, there may be different setting of uh, the longitudinal position of the seats may be required so in that way the sliding mechanism can be given in in the seats so you can see uh, just view at my cursor i am moving a cursor on it so this is the uh, frame you can see uh, the frame the seat cushion is uh, fixed on this part and this frame is separate and they both are hinged over here so the seat back can rotate about uh, this point and uh, the seat cushion portion is mounted on a rail so the bottom dark color bracket is a actually a rail where the seat uh, slides so this is a sliding arrangement and uh, the bottom most part the rail it is fixed on the vehicle floor so the seat cushion can be adjusted according to the height of drivers so if you are trying to uh, uh, identify two three driver and uh, they are having the different heights 
so you may choose to go for sliding type of mechanism or otherwise uh, uh, not a regular kind of uh, adjustment can be given but you can choose two three uh, different mounting locations according to your driver you can just uh, uh, remove the seat and fix to another slot so you can have three four slots where you need to fix so this will be the most uh, easy sliding arrangement it will not be actually a sliding it will be uh, multiple mounting locations in the longitudinal direction so this way you can also try to give a thought on it so just few uh, um, graphical representation of uh, seat adjustment so as i explained uh, this is the rotation of seat back and uh, the slider goes like this way and as i as i was explaining in the last picture so this is the seat cushion part and this is uh, representing the seat back and uh, this picture shows a recliner mechanism which is given in a car car seats so this is a typical recliner mechanism which is used in a car so there are springs and levers which give you a different type of adjustment but you uh, need not to make this type of complicated design these are for your reference and uh, you can uh, innovate uh, some new kind of mechanism by uh, the reference of this picture so now we will discuss about seat height and sitting space uh, so these are uh, the terminologies which are used in the rule book so seat height means the height of uh, seat from the ground so if i uh, measure uh, the height of uh, uh, seat of your fe cycle so then i will uh, park it on a ground plane which is horizontal and then uh, uh, i will try to find out the height of point a we discussed uh, in the last session which is point a and how to identify so again i will explain it uh, very briefly so to identify point a you need the intersection of seat back and seat cushion Uh, so this is seat cushion the bottom line and uh, the tilted line is uh, the seat back so intersection is there and then we move 4 inches along the seat cushion in forward direction so from here i will move here and i will reach to the point a and from the figure you can see that the height of point a from the ground is denoted by d so d should be uh, less than 24 inches in all cases for all drivers uh for both drivers mainly the seating height cannot be more than 24 inches so it can be equal to or less than 24 inches for for both drivers so uh and this will be measured uh, without drivers so without drivers the when the vehicle is standing alone Uh, then this kind of measurement will be uh, taken uh, to avoid the effect of uh, suspension compression if you are using suspensions uh, the seating height may go below but without uh, the seats occupied suspense when the suspensor are not compressed then uh, the d may go beyond 24 inches so please take care so the measurement will be done without Uh, drivers without any single driver or the payload It's purely only the vehicle then there is another para parameter which is called uh, sitting height uh, sorry sitting space so uh, the arrow moves to the sitting space parameter which is called hs denoted by hs so there is very easy definition of uh, sitting space the vertical clearance between point a and point b we discussed the point b also in the last session that when we move uh, vertically upward from point a and we uh, reach to the ohpm so uh, there we meet to the point b so the vertical clearance between uh, point a and point b is denoted by hs so there are separate rules how to uh, identify and uh, fix the hs so I, i will discuss it in the next slide 
and uh, here i want to mention that uh, please take care when i say clearance it is the free space available so in order to uh, measure hs or the sitting space height you need the point a on the top of seat cushion surface which is uncompressed and then uh, this point b is on the bottom side in the picture also you can see the the cross point is on the bottom as of the ohpm so this gray member is ohpm so the bottom uh, portion is denoted by point b so the point a and point b uh, the clearance in between these two points will be sitting in space i so uh, you can see uh, uh, as i explained that the seat uh, cushion may be uh, made sliding in nature to give the adjustment according to driver height and also the seat back can be given inclined so the alpha will be always changing if you have reclined seat the seat back is not fixed and you have a recliner mechanism so the alpha will be always changing so alpha is the angle between your seat back front most surface and the vertical the dotted line is the vertical line so now let's discuss what will be the effect of alpha on this sitting in space hs uh, before that uh, let's discuss uh, uh, one important rule uh, if you have sliding seats if the uh, seat are sliding back and forth forward and rearward then we discussed in the last session about ohpm uh, clearance uh, the the length of ohpm so the gray member is denoted as ohpm here and we discussed about line 1 and line 2 and point b so the rule was uh, to define the limit of ohpm by uh, line 2 and point b so whichever is more forward the point b uh, or line 2 whichever is more forward that will decide the length of ohpm so if there is a case where uh, uh, please take care uh, uh, in this area if the seat back is more upright or more on the vertical side which means the alpha is reduced so the red new dotted red line is denoting the new seat back angle so if this is the case what will happen the driver will move forward such that the seat back is supported by the uh, seat back is supporting the torso so now you see alpha is reduced so driver has to move uh, or lean forward so in this way the head of driver will be shifted so that's why line 1 and line 2 both have shifted but point b is still there so in that case what will happen uh, we need to make the ohpm more forward the horizontal so this rule is applicable for conventional category vehicles so in this condition the ohpm will also be shifted it means it it will be extended so as the line 2 moves the horizontal extension of ohpm will also move like this so please take care of this this is very important rule if you have reclining seats sometime it is uh, not taken care by the teams and they feel uh, difficulty to clear the technical inspection just because of this point okay so now let's discuss if the alpha is moving how it will affect the sitting space height so we have divided alpha into three ranges so in this table you can see range 1 2 which means uh, if the alpha is uh, less than 25 degree that means it is more vertical uh, so sitting space height should be 40 inches for convention conventional category i am talking about so sitting space height should be always 40 inches so it is the fixed 
height given you cannot play with it it is a fixed dimension you need to make it always 40 inches and then if you have a alpha ranging from 25 to 45 degree for example if you have a, let's say 30 degree feedback angle so then um, you have to give the height of sitting space 37 inches again this is a fixed dimension but if you go beyond 45 degree like more reclining backward normally uh, like half lying position so then it is uh, 32 inches so all these three sitting space height which are uh, according to ranges of alpha are fixed height only the manufacturing tolerance of plus minus 1 inches can be considered uh, but in your cad when uh, during the virtual we will inspect your cad so that cad should uh, define the height exactly as per these uh, dimensions so please take care the inspectors will be uh, this time uh, as the we are doing the virtual event so the inspection also we conducted virtually because we are not able to uh, uh, fabricate the vehicle uh, till the virtual so the cad model itself will be inspected virtually and the virtual uh, technical inspector will inspect all these dimensions so uh, tomorrow i will explain about the virtual technical inspection sheet where uh, and the other uh, documents and uh, in that you can see how these evaluations will be conducted and it may also happen that uh, the alpha is ranging from uh, let's say 15 degree to 35 degree it may also possible if you are having adjustable uh, seat back such that the range of alpha is lying into two ranges so then how, what to do in that case you go with the least uh, seat back angle which means the maximum sitting height uh, applicable so as per one adjustment uh, for 15 degree sitting space height comes to be 14 inches and for maximum alpha that is 35 degree the seat back uh, the hs comes to 37 degree then which one to select so this may be a common question for such teams so in that condition you go with the maximum sitting space height so that that is the worst case and uh, also seat back support member is mandatory Uh, for the protection of occupants or the drivers uh, in case the seat back fails seat back uh, some mounting fails or it breaks or something bad happens with your vehicle so in that condition there should be something to hold it so a seat back support member is uh, mandatory and it should have a, a member which is same as the frame member welded to the uh, main body of frame and it can be a just a uh, inclined member uh, like this behind just behind the seat back so this is the seat back uh, so there can be a one member uh, uh, supporting it like this but if the seat back is tilted so then according to the maximum seat back angle the seat back support member can be given so this is the seat back support member it can be a horizontal bar it can be a cross uh, kind of thing uh, it can be a loop uh, so whatever uh, you feel okay uh, you can provide a seat back support member in that way and uh, so next we will move to the seat belt section sir am i audible i ओरिजिनल इक्विपमेंट मैन्युफैक्चर और सिंपली यू कैन से कार मैन्युफैक्चर so the seat belts which are used in uh, actual cars 
should be used in your FE cycle. And that seat belt should be a three point seat belt. Three point means it, it is mounted in the three points. So one on the shoulder and uh, two points on the lap. One on the shoulder and lap like this. So the people who drive the cars normally and uh, they might be understanding this uh, very easily. So uh, there are two portions. One is shoulder belt and one is the lap belt. Lap belt which, which uh, restricts your lap. And uh, there should be a retractor. The retractor is a device which is present in the seat belt which uh, uh, takes the slackness of uh, seat belt automatically inward the the roll so seat belt is always uh, uh, being pulled by the retractor inside the loop whenever you pull you need to put some effort in uh, pulling it so if you are uh, driving a car and uh, before that starting driving if you try to put the uh, put on the seat belt you need to pull it from behind from the shoulder so that takes some effort so that is due to the retractive force uh, being offered by the retractor mechanism it is basically a, uh, a spring uh, loaded device uh, it's a it's a real kind of thing so the seat belt is wrapped on it so this the retractor takes uh, the extra amount of seat belts all automatically in so that it is perfectly uh, engaged with your body and uh, the method how you should mount your seat belt is uh, it should come across the outboard shoulder outboard means the outer side on the outer side of vehicle if you are the left uh, rider so the outboard will be on, on your left side and uh, if you are right board driver right driver the outboard will be your right side so on the outer side of the vehicle it should come across the body and should lap inward like this so uh, easy to uh, understand uh, uh, once more i am uh, iterating in this uh, in different words so the shoulder mounting should be always on the outer frame and the lap mounting or the buckle in which you fasten your seat belt so that should be somewhere in the middle of uh, your uh, seatings if if this is a adjustable uh, sorry adjacent uh, seating arrangement for longitudinal uh, if one person is sitting behind the other then always you follow same rule which is for a driver in a car always uh, shoulder belt on the right side shoulder mounting on the right side and uh, the buckle should go on the left side and how to mount the shoulder belt uh, so there are some dimensions given in the rule book and it is applicable for both category vehicles first and foremost requirement is the shoulder belt should be mounted behind the driver so that means behind the seat back and then it should be minimum 4 inches above the shoulder level of driver so in the picture you can see the driver uh, shoulder level is shown by this line and uh, we have drawn another line 4 inches above that so this is one limit above this you can mount the seat belt the shoulder belt once again repeating you can mount the shoulder belt above this line only the up, the upper vertical line only and the lateral distance of the seat belt from the seat center plane or you can understand it uh, simply as a uh, driver's uh, body center so from that but technically uh, right way is to say the seat center so from the seat center it should be minimum 8 inches away towards outer side so the right line here shows the seat back center and the left dotted vertical line defines the limit of 8 inches away so uh, the rule says that there should be uh, the mountain should be always in this space 
by the rule so you cannot uh, mount in any case in this area also not in this area and not in this area but uh, the only possible location is this i hope it is clear and then i'll move to the type of seat belt which are allowed for fe cycle so the upper uh, four figures uh, show that these are not applicable type of seat belt these are actually not the seat belt these are some straps or something uh, which are used uh, for some other applications but not for automotive uh, the fourth one in the upper row is a automotive seat belt but that is a two point seat belt that restricts your uh, lap only it doesn't folds uh, your upper body so the right one is shown here at the bottom so you can see a belt and uh, a buckle so buckle is mounted on the inboard side and this red button is uh, for opening the seat belt and the tongue goes inside this slot and uh, the box kind of thing is a retractor it's a reel inside so whenever you try to purchase a seat belt uh, just take care that it is having a retractor and uh, all the components shoulder belt and uh, mountings are there tongs are there it is free of cuts wear and tear holes punch anything should not be present uh, uh, any damage should not be there in the seat belt and it is properly functioning so it should be always checked when you are purchasing a seat belt and uh, this point should be always checked so if you don't uh, mount the seat belt uh, behind the shoulder and upside of shoulder so this problem will come the belt will slip uh, and in this picture you can see this person is driving uh, and uh, this is actually a very old picture this is not a uh, one of the latest fe cycle this is from uh, the season where delta configuration was allowed so maybe from 2013 or 14 so in this picture you can see the seat belt is uh, slipping over the shoulder and uh, in the in the right picture when you can see the the mannequin is uh, wearing the seat belt so it is same it is having the same position so this should not uh, happen in the static and dynamic condition so please take care of that it will be automatically avoided when you correctly mount the shoulder anchorage and uh, then the third part of the seat uh, which is the headrest so headrest is uh, not mandatory you can use a headrest uh, which supports your neck and head basically it is uh, to avoid any injury to the head and neck especially to the neck whenever your uh, impact happens especially in case of rear impact when somebody hits you from the rear side so the tendency of uh, the head is to uh, recline uh, backward if the headrest is not there because uh, from the seat back your torso or the the, the upper body till the shoulder level is uh, resting on a seat back but the, as the head is heavy and the impact happens so due to inertia the head moves to backward so due to that the injury happens so to avoid that you must use a headrest and uh, it can be uh, the part of seat back itself and uh, actually uh, if if you are trying to make a uh, seat in house you can make a seat back very very long so that it comes till the head level and it gives you a headrest support itself and thickness of the headrest can be adjusted uh, with reference to the thickness of seat back according to the driver comfort and uh, also it can be made adjustable uh, it can be made a separate uh, a totally separate item which is not a part of seat itself it can be mounted on the frame separately as a separate padding or cushion which should be soft enough and there should not be any sharp uh, or hard objects 
any metal objects which may contact uh, the driver head so it will create a injury if, if it is present over there and uh, if the headrest is provided uh, for the conventional category vehicle the minimum clearance between the headrest and the driver helmet must be 1 inches maximum so this clearance will be measured uh, when uh, the driver is sitting with the helmet and the the clearance between the helmet and the headrest should not exceed 1 inches and minimum area of the headrest should be 6 inches by 6 inches so this is the maximum dimensions uh, sorry minimum dimensions minimum height and minimum width of the headrest then we will discuss about the clearance part so let's discuss the clearance part which is applicable for uh, conventional and advanced both so clearance is two uh, two type of clearance one is the clearance between driver body uh, with the other driver body and vehicle and uh, second is the clearance from the ground of vehicle parts so driver body parts should not be in any direct contact with the vehicle uh, and should have a minimum 3 inch clearance from the frame and vehicle members in all static and dynamic conditions so most common error happens is uh, we uh, measure uh, the clearance in the static condition and if it is meeting then also in the dynamic condition the clearance may change because when the vehicle is motion is in motion the parts of the vehicle are also moving some are rotating parts some are uh, 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 parts which are uh, uh, moving uh, in the other direction or they are having different kind of motion so for example wheels wheels uh, they may be uh, moving left to right because of the steering so in that condition if the in the static condition when the wheels are in a straight position so the driver leg uh, may be in enough clearance with the tire but when the tire rotates like this so the it hinders with the legs so it is very very dangerous situation so try to avoid that and try to make sure that in all static and dynamic conditions the clearance of driver body are are meeting this requirement of 3 inches minimum with all the vehicle members but uh, this rule is exempted for those parts which are directly being uh, used by the driver or are in contact uh, with the driver body due to their nature of operation because uh, uh, for example seats uh, it is logical that seat cannot have any 3 inches clearance seat steering handles or steering wheel cannot have 3 inch clearance seat belts are uh, also exempted so there may be any uh, uh, many other uh, component which may be exempted by this rule so try to apply simple logic uh, the vehicle uh, parts which can create which can cause damage or injury to the drivers should must be having 3 inch clearance and the same rule is applicable between both the drivers also and uh, next clearances becomes uh, uh, the also the important rule so this is for the ground clearance of vehicle body parts so we have divided in, it into two type of parts one is rigid parts and one is moving part so for the rigid parts they should have minimum 6 inches clearance from the ground in their lowest possible position but uh, wheels are exempted and uh, because wheel has to be on the ground itself and uh, anything mounted directly on the wheel will be considered as wheel assembly like disc brake or any other uh, 
gear mechanism will be considered as a wheel assembly and that should uh, also be exempted and there are other parts which are not rigid uh, rigid parts are basically the sprockets or uh, the the parts which you mount on the vehicle like uh, motors gear boxes batteries they should always be minimum 6 inches above the ground and uh, uh, there are other type of uh, components which are uh, moving or rotating and if the obstacle hits any ground obstacle like a speed breaker or uh, the bumps uh, or any stone or any hard object which is uh, lying on the ground and it hits uh, these parts so if there is any possibility that they can avoid their damage by changing their position themselves so then it can be exempted otherwise they should have uh, six inches only so for example the paddles are only the the crank kind of thing so they are continuously in the rotating condition and uh, if any obstacle uh, hits them so the paddle crank can move and adjust themselves into other position uh, to avoid any bigger damage um i am not saying that uh, in that condition also the paddles will be safe always uh, so you try to judge by yourself whether uh, your paddles are capable of uh, keeping themselves safe or not so in that condition uh, i have uh, some examples uh, to demonstrate uh, this 3 inch and 6 inches uh, rule so you try to uh, imagine that the paddles shown in this picture are rotating when the vehicle is in motion and when this goes in the bottom most position or let's say the paddle crank bar is completely vertical so in that condition the lower most surface of the paddle or the crank bar should be minimum 3 inches above the ground and uh, these this the lower picture shows the derailleur mechanism which is uh, used to change the or the shift the gears if you are using that so in the right picture also you can see some kind of derailleur is uh, being used so if they are used in uh, the vehicle they should be considered as rigid parts and uh, they should be uh, 6 inches above like if they are uh, being used in a intermediate shaft or at some other places so they should have 6 inch clearance from the ground but if this derailleur is mounted on the on the wheel itself just like in the rightmost picture you can see the wheel is having the gear cassette and the derailleur is there so then this derailleur will be considered as a wheel assembly and then it will be exempted but if you are using the same mechanism somewhere else which is not a wheel maybe if you are having a multiple intermediate soft concept so if you are using uh, it there then it can be uh, it should be complying this rule of 6 inches i hope i have uh, clarified this very well in uh, through the examples but if you still have any query you please try to uh, post it in the uh, q and a chat box and do not forget to mention your team id and team name or uh, along with your name so that we can identify and answer your query the query without any uh, uh, identification will not be answered so then let's discuss about uh, the power related rules so the power for uh, conventional vehicle is uh, coming from the human power and uh, electrical power for advanced hybrid also human plus electrical power train but only for electrical uh, sorry advanced electric uh, vehicle only electrical power train will be used so there will not be any human power so human power is most commonly used uh, with the paddle uh, and uh, chain sprocket mechanism uh, the one which is shown uh, in the picture also in the slide but you can also use hand or foot operated uh, other type of hand or foot operated mechanisms uh, some teams in the previous seasons 
have been using this uh, but try to make sure that it is uh, whatever other mechanism you are using is uh, efficient enough and uh, not making you tired and also delivering the good amount of energy uh, or the power to the wheels so there should be individual power train for two drivers uh, and uh, the drivers human power train should be able to run in the single passenger and dual passenger mode so this means when only one driver is uh, pushing the paddles then also the vehicle should run and uh, when both are uh, operating their paddle drive then also it should run so some mechanism should not be uh, developed like uh, when both are operating the uh, motion is not being transferred so it has happened to some teams in the past so try to avoid that in the advanced electric category you need not to put any paddle or any human body operated uh, power trains only electrical dri drive train is there so the um, advantage of uh, electric power train and electric vehicle are uh, like first of all you can make it a compact vehicle you can uh, make it very lightweight because a uh, lot many components are not there your uh, gear cassettes your uh, paddles chain sprockets shafts bearing you try to uh, you will not be using those uh, components so ultimately the vehicle weight can be reduced by a good amount and uh, as the weight goes below and the power from electric drive remains constant so the power to weight ratio will be high although some team have uh, asked the question in uh, uh, previous sessions and uh, previous meetings that electric drive uh, will not be having the human power train so uh, there can be advantage uh, to the teams with a human drive train but uh, i will try to uh, convey that uh, the power train uh, for the electric drive is same for all and uh, uh, roughly uh, when you try to put your paddles and the entire paddle drive mechanism so the amount of energy which you um, the amount of human power which you try to put into uh, your uh, overall drive is almost uh, Uh, nullifies the effect of uh, uh, that thing so i mean to say uh, when the paddle drive is used the extra amount of uh, power which you uh, uh, put so due to the higher weight already available due to this component up to some extent it uh, goes uh, uh, nullifies so there is no scientific study uh, till now available like uh, in fe cycle uh, how much uh, ratio or power to weight will increase but still you can uh, you can use uh, the power train efficiently if the weight is uh, reduced by good amount because you will try to make the vehicle compact and uh, and uh, also the drive train component will also be not there so the overall weight reduction will be uh, uh, a huge weight reduction and uh, as the components are less cost will also be low so you can also have the advantage and manufacturing uh, complications will also be removed and uh, uh, in the picture you can see is like this is the most common problem in the human drive train the chain breaks or uh, chain uh, comes out of the sprockets so these kind of mechanism will also be um, and uh, if they are not there the complication in the uh, human drive train will also be not present in the electric variant so you can give a thought to uh, opting for electric drive uh, uh, vehicle or electric variant so if, if if you can make it efficiently actually you can use it uh, uh, um, efficiently in the competition so the requirement which have been introduced for advanced electric variant is uh, uh, the transmission system can be made uh, through gear boxes 
this is not mandatory actually if the transmission system requirement is these are the options available to you so the gearbox can be attached to the uh, motor and uh, also you can use a simple gear train rather than having multiple shafts uh, in between and uh, using the chain sprocket if you uh, feel the chain sprocket is okay then uh, you can use it otherwise belt and pulley can also be uh, used and then uh, there is a mandatory requirement to have a reverse mechanism in the advanced electric variant so the reverse mechanism can be uh, given by two ways uh, by putting a gearbox or a idler gear in between or by the controller itself uh, you can you can give a toggle switch or some electric uh, electronic circuit so that changes the polarity of uh, the electric circuit and in that way you can use the motor in the reverse condition also so that way you can develop a reverse mechanism before i move to the next slide let's have a, a break of uh, Uh, let's say uh, break for 5 minutes then we will resume it
okay so we will start again uh, i hope everyone is back from the break uh so we are discussing about the power train requirement of uh, fe cycle and uh, for the electrical power we have uh, fixed the motor uh, which is having the rated uh, the specification of 48 volt and 600 watt output uh, vldc motor and uh, only ktc 600r model motor and controller unit can be used so if uh, you want to use this motor you need to purchase it from our authorized uh, uh, motor vendor vixen india so the motor uh, from other sources are not uh, allowed to use so the new teams in, will need to purchase the motor and if the old team uh, if they have uh, the damaged motor or if you want to add, buy the additional motor and controller unit you will need to buy a new kit uh, but uh, till the virtual round uh, you should not purchase it we will again if if the physical event is announced then uh, we will inform you about the deadlines of motor purchase and uh, for this motor uh, uh, controller unit any kind of operating mechanism can be applied uh, uh, to control the uh, uh, basically this is for the transmission system so the gear drive chain and sprocket or any electronic uh, arrangement can be used and uh, the direct mounting of motor on the wheels is uh, not permitted the coupling of motor directly on the wheels is not permitted so you should have some type of uh, transmission arrangement in between to mount uh, your uh, motor on the in the powertrain mechanism to provide the power to this uh, ktc motor you need a battery and as per the rule uh, you can use 48 volt and 35 ampere hour capacity uh, battery so these are the maximum uh, capacity uh, 35 ampere hour maximum can be used and uh, you can use even less than that if you feel that 35 ampere hour is not needed you can uh, you can uh, use uh, uh, a, a lesser capacity battery and it will be sufficient for the entire uh, endurance run so that can be used so and uh, the battery voltage should be 48 volt because uh, the motor is having the 48 volt uh, uh, rating and if a single battery is not available of these ratings so more than one battery or cells can be used uh, so they give a combination of uh, the 48 volt and 35 ampere are maximum so whether it is a lead, lead acid battery bank or a lithium ion battery bank or any other type of battery so that can be uh, used in a proper combination and both uh, specifications should be checked the voltage across the terminal and uh, the capacity of the battery bank should not exceed up with the exceed to the given ratings and uh, as i said if you feel that 35 ampere hour is not needed you can uh, use even less than that so that optimal weight of the battery can be achieved because the battery is a uh, additional weight which you need to pull but it is mandatory because you need power to the motor so try to reduce the add on weight and try to use the battery which are uh, having very less weight so lithium ion batteries are a good option but they are uh, a little costly and uh, so that is again your uh, depends upon your uh, budgets so uh, one uh, uh, recommendation from uh, my side to the teams as uh, in the virtual uh, you are using the cad model only so the battery which you are selecting in the virtual round should not be changed later on so if you are uh, using uh, lithium ion battery in a cad model and later on if you are not able to arrange the battery uh, lithium ion battery for physical uh, vehicle fabrication so that will not be allowed or you may uh, face some kind of penalty for that if you want to convert it from lithium ion to lead acid 
or also from lead acid to lithium ion so that is uh, uh, the recommendation from my side please take care of it and uh, whatever battery you use whether it is lithium ion or uh, lithium polymer or uh, uh, lead acid the battery specification should be written on the battery bank itself and it should be written by the manufacturer itself so the printed uh, specifications uh, are available on battery uh, and if you are uh, customizing a battery lithium ion so then you ask uh, your uh, battery provider to specify or engrave uh, the specification on it for the additional circuit like for uh, sensors or uh, solar uh, mechanism or uh, energy regeneration mechanism if you want to use any additional battery that is allowed there are no specifications given in the rule book that is totally on on your choice and uh, you should select it according to the consumption requirement so if you need a uh, 10 ampere hour for uh, running all the appliances in your vehicle so then the battery can be uh, up to 10 ah only and voltage also not specified so this is totally depend upon on your choice and battery protection should be completely ensured because uh, battery is a very critical part if uh, the battery is damaged due to some uh, um, leakage or mechanical damage it may um, convert into some mess happening and uh, it is not good for the safety of drivers and uh, Uh, other personals involved in the event so batteries uh, may explode if they are not handled uh, uh, correctly and uh, any physical damage may create a big damage to the battery and uh, to the uh, nearby uh, nearby area so protection should be ensured and for electrical uh, sorry advanced uh, vehicles we have given a requirement of ip65 which uh, uh, recommends the dam uh, the ingress of dust and moisture into the uh, electrical components especially battery motor and other uh, critical components and it should be sealed and leak proof for uh, protection from mud and splash splash because this situation you may face in the event and uh, for advanced vehicles only lithium ion batteries are allowed so you cannot use any um, lead acid battery or any other battery only lithium ion battery can be used by an, an advanced vehicle so please make sure that uh, uh, you have the suppliers available or the resources available to use it otherwise uh, you cannot uh, part participate in the advanced category if you are not having the lithium ion battery in your vehicle so these are a few examples uh, of the conditions uh, or the environment in which you may be exposed during the event as you can see in the uh, left picture there is a vehicle passing through the water gate where a shower from uh, side and top are coming especially in this picture you can see the side showers so this is directly coming on the solar panel if you can notice the solar panel on the top of uh, the vehicle's roof the panel is directly exposed to the water spray and also uh, as the water is coming from side it can go to any other part of the vehicle so on the on the, uh, the rear side of the vehicle uh, if uh, the motor or the battery is placed or uh, the water can anyway make entry into these components so uh, there can be uh, some uh, unwanted uh, situation which may arise due to this so we would like to uh, make sure that uh, the vehicles are coming with full protection uh, any one with in, who does not qualify the protection requirement uh, in the technical inspection round will not be allowed to move on the tracks and uh, on the right picture you can see even though the water gate is not there some uh, water uh, patches may be uh, available so when the vehicle pass through those patches so because of the 
tire rotation the splash may hit the components so you can see here the bat motor is mounted i suppose so the motor is mounted high enough so that any splash uh, from the ground should not come but it may be exposed to the uh, showers from the side as i mentioned in the uh, opening session uh, uh first introductory session which was held in april so if you guys remember i mentioned that time that uh, for the advanced electric variant there will be one shower test where a high jet of high pressure jet of showers uh, of water will be used to inspect the insulation and also the vehicle of advanced electric category will need to move uh, through the water track as a part of utility demonstration test so these both situations are example and i should say the low level examples of uh, those conditions the actual condition will be uh, severe than this so once again i am emphasizing that uh, protection of battery and all electric, electric component is very very uh, important critical and uh, that's why we have made it mandatory so please take care of it regarding the battery uh, bank you need to check these points so in the battery bank where you are using multiple cells multiple uh, individual batteries so the combination should be checked always such that uh, the both parameters the voltage rating and the capacity both are uh, uh, within the limit so there can be multiple kind of uh, combinations made series and uh, parallel and uh, parallel of series or series of parallels so this can be uh, adding up or uh, enhancing the terminal voltage and uh, capacity so uh, that's why you need to check the capacity of the bank so for that you need to uh, provide a uh, drawing or uh, the internal circuit uh, arrangement to the judges so that they can uh, inspect whether the battery bank specifications are within the required limit or not for battery in the advanced uh, vehicles you can uh, you need to use a plug in charging system plug in charging system means the battery is always mounted in the vehicle and uh, you need not to remove it uh, for charging purpose so that's why you should have some portable charger kind of mechanism and uh, the plug in points which can be used for uh, connecting the char charger couplers directly to the battery so you may have uh, the battery terminals uh, available uh, directly or otherwise if you have uh, some kind of insulation or uh, uh, some kind of protection system or shield co uh, made covered on that so you may extend some kind of connector some kind of uh, circuits so the connectors may be provided in the on the battery side and charger side both so that the couplers can be uh, used uh, uh, to connect the charger from the battery so in the competition site uh, charging ports or the power points will be provided in each pit so that you can charge your vehicle there itself uh, but it is very important to know which is the suitable charger and what are the suitable harness or cables and connectors Uh, which are uh, compatible to your uh, vehicle your battery and you should use that only so first of all uh, read uh, some literature on uh, books or internet which is uh, which gives you knowledge on uh, batteries and charging mechanism and uh, whatever component you buy or implement in your vehicle that should be compliant to the regulations in india 
so in indian regulations in automotive industry we have indian standards and uh, automotive industry standards and some sae standards are also there or internationally uh, iec standards are also followed so all these uh, regulations uh, they provide some kind of marking or rating to the components so these are marked markings printed engraved or somehow available on the component itself so whenever you buy a cable or some component some kind of marks are given there so always try to ask the vendor uh, uh, about the compliance of these uh, components according to their norms the regulations and the standards so they can uh, tell you about that like this is isi mark present on that or ce mark present on the, the devices like in your mobile also you have some kind of uh, uh, rating i i am displaying my phone over here so i know i don't know whether it is uh, visible to you but you can see some kind of uh, is mark or uh, iec Uh, standard number is uh, present over there you can also check your mobile phones your laptops and any other electronic devices uh, they should all have these kind of marks present on that that means the component or the part is compliant to the regulations some regulations uh, maybe it is indian regulation or maybe european regulation or ece regulation or iec regulation so please uh, take care of it then we move to the energy regeneration part uh, for conventional category we will discuss in the slide so this is the optional requirement in fe cycle 2020 you can come with a energy regeneration mechanism in your uh, conventional category vehicle so this uh, mechanism in short we will call it ers energy regeneration system so in e, in your vehicle ers should be present uh, to convert the kinetic energy of vehicle in into the electrical energy so that electrical energy should be um, uh, stored in some battery uh, uh, in form of charge so that is actually the option requirement but if you bring any ers system in your vehicle so there shall be a separate uh, dynamic test for it and uh, the rule number 8.11 will be followed for that ers dynamic test and the best uh, uh, ers system in terms of the efficiency will be given the award but always the test will be in the braking condition the braking mode your vehicle is coming at a high speed uh, and there is a kinetic energy available in the vehicle and then it is suddenly Uh, stopped or the brakes are applied so just after applying the brake so at the moment the when the deceleration starts so the ers can be um, converting always this energy into the uh, electrical energy which is stored into into the batteries or they are used for charging the battery so the ers which makes use of uh energy conversion in the braking mode will be considered as the ers for 2020 fe cycle any other ers mechanism uh, will not be qualifying this uh, criteria however you can show them as a part of innovation so about the ers of uh, advanced category i will discuss later on because that is uh, basically a non conventional method for advanced vehicles so that will be discussed separately at the end of uh, session then there is a requirement of drive train shielding because the drive train is having a lot of rotating parts lot of sharp uh, uh, objects like sprockets and uh, which are not good for uh, uh, like if some something is trapped Uh, or uh, vehicle body is exposed to these parts in the rotating condition so they may cause uh, a big damage uh, or injury to the body of the driver as well as uh, to somebody else who is doing the inspection or maintenance 
or servicing of your vehicle so the drivetrain seating is uh, uh, required uh, for both way mechanical also and for uh, electrical protection also so we we'll discuss both uh, one by one and to protect the bystanders and other people who are uh, using your vehicle or inspecting or uh, uh, servicing your vehicle so the chain is sprocket or pedals or uh, anything which is uh, prone to uh, the to come come in contact with the other person should be covered perfectly in such a way that uh, no damage or no injury occurs to the other person and uh, if the paddles are projected out to side uh, on the forward side so the fairing can also be treated as a uh, mechanical protection for other people but for your drivers you can uh, use some kind of cover on chain sprocket mechanism and uh, electrical circuits uh, and uh, all the battery terminals should be perfectly insulated using the good uh, engineering practices uh, there are certain methods to provide insulations do not always use uh, 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 insulation tapes or uh, some other kind of uh, covers so there are terminal battery terminal caps which are available uh, these are the standard product in which are available in the market so try to use them proper insulation should be there and we also have released a lot of tips uh, through our alumni committee uh, our alumni member are uh, trying to pro provide some kind of documents uh, which can be used as a tip to by the teams so i remember uh, there are some uh, tips available uh, which uh, provide some good information about uh, wires and uh, uh, wire joining insulations about the batteries so these all were released in our social media handles so please try to explore that if you have not seen the it till now visit the social media uh, platforms like facebook uh, even on instagram linkedin twitter everywhere it is available and uh, apart from battery and uh, electrical drive train you will find uh, many other uh, tip document uh, for uh, cae for uh, uh, drive train for uh, many other things uh, so there are 18 tips uh, available i think till now and we will be releasing some more time to time uh, so please make sure you use it for your knowledge enhancement and the proper routing of the cables harness uh, should be present so uh, cable should not be lying here and there uh, and it's it, it should be in a proper conduit uh, which is uh, good uh, good enough to protect them uh, from a uh, small loads uh, crushing pinching like that so a proper conduiting should be done done uh, and uh, all cables should pass through that conduit and the conduit should be tied with the frame so try to cover them as much as possible Oh, sorry yes so i would like to show you this picture uh, which impressed me a lot in the previous season uh, this is uh, just focus on the cursor uh, you can see uh, the level of protection given to the chain and sprockets in this vehicle is uh, highly appreciated and uh, uh, they have almost covered everything you cannot see chain and sprocket uh, in this uh, vehicle so this is uh, how the protection should be given to the chain sprocket the rotating parts 
and also in between uh, some electrical cables are uh, passing through so the the casings are given to them so that the any direct pinching or cutting of the cable is not uh, uh, is 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 avoided in all the cases so please try to uh, provide these this level of protection to all the rooting parts so that you can avoid the injuries then let's discuss about the brakes uh, brakes are very very important uh, and essential uh, component of the drive train and uh, you can use according to your choice hydraulic or non hydraulic uh, non hydraulic means the mechanical uh, brakes so the caliper uh, and this kind of uh, brakes can be used otherwise you can use simple shoe brake so whichever is the most effective uh, uh braking system for your fe cycle you can use that and uh, that's the only criteria is that the vehicle should pass the brake test and uh, the brake should be always uh, available on all three wheels some people try to put it uh, on the axle so that a common braking system can be used but uh, let me inform you that uh, this is not uh, a good way even if you are putting any brake on axle that can be the additional one one but the uh, brakes should be separately available on all three wheels and there is some change in the rule book uh, already uh, included in the rule book itself for 2020 season that means the control of all three brakes should be available with only primary driver till last time it was a rule that it should be given to one driver any one driver but all three controls should be given to one driver but it can be any driver but now the rule is uh, you should have all the controls given to the primary driver primary driver is one who is holding the steering control so same person should have the steering control and the brake controls both so that way uh, there is no confusion uh, and uh, accidents can be avoided so please uh, make a note of it uh, we will discuss all the rules uh, related to the vehicle requirement in today's session uh, and if you have any query please keep it posted in q and a and at last i will handle and answer all queries and uh, now let's discuss the steering control requirement a steering control uh, can be provided by uh, as a steering handle or a steering wheel uh, but it should be controlled by right side driver right side driver is for adjacent seating side by side seating but if you have any longitudinal arrangement that should be uh, uh, the control should be given to the front driver so the front driver and the right driver are considered as the primary driver they should have the steering control as well as the brake control so that is applicable for conventional and advanced both and uh, the steering control can be uh, controlled by the mechanical linkages uh, uh, and uh, wires gears or any electronic mechanism hydraulic mechanism anything the only requirement for the steering control is that the the figure of it should be clearly uh, qualified by the vehicle and uh, for figure of it you can see a track is there uh, where you make a entry from the left and then you rotate like it uh, you you go along with the arrows and your all wheels should be within these uh, outer and inner circles so the path with between the inner and outer circles are considered as a track and if you go inside or outside any wheel of your vehicle if it goes outside or inside that means the figure of it condition is not meeting so only requirement is that you meet it uh, in the figure of it test and uh, the turning radius should be limited to 4 meter so that uh, you can see the the dia of this uh, figure of 8 outer circle is 8 meter so if you have a maximum turning radius to 
four meter, so then only you can qualify it. That will be checked in the final uh, physical competition uh, in the technical inspection round. There is one additional requirement added for advanced category vehicles uh, for steering control. Uh, you can see in this picture uh, the distance from uh, steering wheel rear most part. So if the steering wheel is tilted, then the rear most part is this one and uh, the distance to the chest should be more than or equal to 220 millimeter. It cannot be less than 220 millimeter in any case. So this is a new requirement added for the advanced category vehicles. Even if uh, you are using uh, a steering handle uh, like a bike handle, so if you are rotating it uh, left or right, then also uh, in the rearmost position it should be meeting this requirement. The distance of 220 mm should be maintained. There is a requirement of utility box as well. Utility box means uh, one box where you can put some payload and uh, that is for basically for the luggage of the person. But for FE cycle uh, event, we will uh, put some payload into it, which is equal to uh, maximum 20 kg. And uh, the vehicle should carry the two drivers and 20 kg load any without any difficulty so this is the requirement that utility box should also be uh, made rigid strong enough and should not be hanging or uh, vibrating one so it should be uh, mounted rigidly over there and the internal dimension should be uh, 16 inches by 12 inches for the base and 8 inches for the height so these are the internal dimensions and uh, if you are having a utility box, uh, there must be an openable cover at the top. Openable means uh, this kind of uh, cover or the uh, the flap, but it should be uh, it should always not be open. There should be some cover on it, and uh, you can use it. Uh, you can open it when you are putting the payload, and uh, after putting it, you can lock it or fix it so that it doesn't open up automatically. And uh, thus it provides uh, the protection to the uh, payload items uh, from falling uh, of uh, the items automatically on the ground. And uh, payload will be used in uh, the dynamic test. So, and inspection also, it can be, uh, it will be used for uh, checking the uh, rigidity and the payload carrying capability of the utility box. For the conventional category, we are calling it a box, which should be a, uh, perfectly a box itself, a separate uh, item. But uh, in the advanced category, it may or may not be a box. So that's why we are calling it a utility space. So there should be something, uh, some space available, which is of the same dimension and uh, just a moment. Yes. <clears throat> so in the ut utility space, uh, the space requirements are same and uh, it should be uh, any it can be anywhere in the vehicle uh, most uh, commonly used uh, uh, location for this space is uh, behind the driver seats so you can uh, make it a boot space kind of uh, space as it is available in a car behind the seat uh, behind the rear seat there is some space the, the cars have uh, tailgates and uh, if you open the tailgate, uh, the boot space is available to put the luggage. So similar kind of uh, uh, arrangement you can uh, provide. 
and it should be openable and uh, normally in during the vehicle motion it should be closed so whenever you try to put a load uh, or some item it can be opened up and uh, put your luggage and then it should be closed so in the ut utility demonstration test uh, the the load will be put in into this utility space so try to make a rigid utility box or utility space according to the vehicle uh, dynamic conditions and uh, we are moving towards the end of uh, the presentation only few side slides are remaining so uh, you can start putting your queries over there and uh, let's uh, discuss few more rules uh, most important rule is the integrity of the vehicle integrity means all parts should be uh, should remain intact nothing should come out of uh, the vehicle automatically uh, after breaking from the vehicle uh, or uh, loosening of the fasteners automatically or by some damage so anything uh, like fairing utility box or some covers body panels or something uh, fasteners should not detach from the vehicle during the vehicle in motion so especially the flexible parts they are uh, prone to damage in the severe dynamic conditions and uh, build quality check should be conducted by the teams itself uh, so that a rigid vibration shakes and uh, small uh, impacts uh, and uh, bumps kind of test can be done by the teams itself and similar kind of test may be conducted during ins inspection to check the quality of uh, vehicle and uh, the parts should remain integral with the vehicles and if this conditions are not satisfied inspectors are not convinced with the quality then they may ask uh, for fixing it up and uh, hence you may Uh, be asked for modifications so try to avoid everything because uh, these uh, items uh, take lot of time in repairing during the competition site uh, in the virtual uh, you need not to take care of it but in the physical uh, competition this is the most important factor because uh, if there is any non compliance according to the design requirement or uh, a safety requirement or uh, from the integrity point of view so inspector will surely not allow you to run until uh, all the compliances are perfectly met and uh, kill switches are also the essential requirement of all conventional and advanced category vehicles it should be a push to off push to off means uh, when you try to uh, engage the kill switch or uh, you want to keep your uh, uh, make your electrical drive train circuit dead then you need to push the kill switch any kind of rotating kill switch or toggle switch or uh, normal electricity uh, appliances switch mcbs are not acceptable only a push to off switch this is a standard kill switch which is available in the market it is most commonly used in the uh, power operated machines like uh, in your uh, workshop you can also see there is a red color uh, uh, switch uh, which is having uh, uh, some uh, uh arrow three arrows are made uh, sorry i don't have the figure of the kill switch and uh, so you need to push when you want to uh, uh stop the supply to your drive train in case of any emergency so that kind of kill switch should be used so at least at least one at least one kill switch uh, uh, should be available in the proximity of uh, all the drivers so if uh, the common kill switch can be used by uh, both of the drivers then it is okay otherwise you uh, you, you will need to put uh, two separate kill switch uh, and uh, rotary to off kill switch uh, as already explained electrical appliances which is self retracting switches uh, self retracting switch means the doorbell kind of switch 
when you press it it operates but as soon as you put your fingers off uh, the switch comes back so doorbell kind of switches are also not allowed so any temporary disengagements are not uh, uh, not okay and mcbs also are also not acceptable then uh, when you make your vehicle uh, you need to put your vehicle number the vehicle number will be given by the technical committee uh, and uh, your team name college name you you can put identification flag should be available in the vehicle you can put your uh, team logo college logo or sponsors logo if you can identify any sponsors and uh, sanis and organizers logo will also be put over there in the vehicle so <clears throat> yes uh, then there is uh, some new rule added for the mounting tabs uh for the advance uh, category rule book the rule is given but if uh, the conventional category teams also follow this uh it will be best because uh, the tab requirement are clearly specified in advance category rule book and uh, that will ensure the full safety and avoid any uh, failure of the tabs so i will read the rules or you can also uh, go through it so all tabs uh, utilizing uh, being utilized for uh, mounting of the components they should have the minimum thickness uh, equal to 2.3 mm and uh, the minimum weld length uh, for the tabs should be 1.5 inches so the length of the weld uh, in the picture at the bottom of slide you can see the length of weld will be y because uh, that edge is being welded to the frame so uh, two point uh, uh, sorry 1.5 inches should be uh, at least weld length uh, available it should be available for uh, mountings of seat seat belts motor and also for the batteries so this is the per tab length and all other tabs uh, can have a minimum 1 inch weld length and uh, the tab should not uh, deform when the load is applied for example if you are using something for the seat belt and uh, the seat belt is pulled or uh, during any accident or panic braking condition when the occupant moves there will be high load put on the seat belt similarly on the uh, parts uh, like seats uh, motors battery suspensions so when there are high loads already acting and when the vehicle goes in the severe dynamic conditions so the mounting tabs will be under the load and then also they should not deform because the if the mounting tab deforms so there are high chances of failure and uh, continuous deforming will surely result into the failure and some is happening so try to uh, increase the weld length or the thickness of tab if uh, the tabs are being deformed and the average distance from the edge of tab edge of tab to the hole of the main tab weld line that means the distance x in this picture the distance x should be 1 uh, inches and the tab will be welded on both side so if you are uh, using uh, tab for mounting the seat so now on the lower side and upper side both side the tab should be welded to the frame if you weld it on one side under the load it will surely break break very easily and uh, the edges of the tab should be rounded it should not be a square tab it should be rounded like this which is shown in the picture so that the corners uh, do not uh, it cause any injury when you are working on your vehicle and tab should also not have any cuts and notches and the hole should all only be circular so use uh, drilling operation to make this circular hole you cannot make a 
a square hole triangular or anything else and you can also not have any cut cuts or notches because at the cuts and notches itself the bending or the deformation will start so these are the requirements for uh, taps of for used for mounting of the component in your uh, vehicle and uh, let's uh, discuss some most uh, uh, one of the most common problem uh, that is with the wheels in most of the fe cycle which use the standard uh, spokes rim uh, under the load they get deformed very easily the the reason is the the wheels which are used in the uh, with the spokes rim are the bicycle wheels and which are uh, not uh, designed for the load equivalent to the fe cycle because these are bicycle wheels and uh, the wheel of uh, the weight of the bicycle and uh, one rider itself is very very less but the weight of the uh, fe cycle itself is 100 kg and more uh, and uh, also that there are two drivers so uh, the driver uh, weight and the vehicle weight increases the load on wheels and then they get deformed so there are some good solutions uh, which are uh, used by the previous year uh, vehicles so i have shown you some pictures so you can use these kind of uh, wheels these kind of rims uh, especially thick tires can be used and uh, the rims with the uh, uh, different type of spokes is, is uh, in the lower pictures you can see there are spokes but they are thicker one and uh, they are uh, uh, strong so they will avoid any deformation and the upper row upper three pictures show that uh, the alloy wheels are used in the uh, alloy alloy rims are used in the wheels so both of them can uh, save uh, your uh, wheels from bending under the high load and under the uh, different uh, dynamic conditions so you can also use that and then let's discuss some mandatory items for advanced fe cycle which we have uh, uh, made compulsory for uh, 2020 advanced category rule book uh, headlamps brake lights turn indicators battery level indicator uh, these are mandatory along with the usb charging port and a smartphone holder power grip pedals are also mandatory and lithium ion battery are also mandatory so you need to put in your advanced fe cycle all of them so there are rules specified for everything uh, in the rule book itself so accordingly you try to put your uh, components in the advanced fe cycle vehicle so let discuss uh, quickly some uh, basic rules about these components so headlamp should be Uh, provided either as a center headlamp or a two side headlamps uh, as used in a, a bikes or a car and uh, it should be mounted uh, uh, at a height from ground between 450 mm to 1200 mm and headlamp should be divergent divergent means uh, the the light should go like this it should be uh, go, going uh, broader uh, when it goes forward it should be diverging so that you see a more area uh, illuminated in front of your vehicle and uh, any white lights can be used any uh, light emitting devices uh, like leds or uh, some other kind of lamps can be used which are white in color any yellow color amber color or uh, any other color will not be uh, accepted and uh, an on and off switch should be provided for the headlamps and uh, there should be a brake light a uh, brake light should be clearly visible uh, and it should be bright so that everybody can see it from the behind in a peak daylight uh, uh, condition also so that uh, the brake lights are easily identified for, for the vehicle which is coming uh, behind uh, so that when you you apply brake the person behind you should uh, know that you have applied the brake 
and they should not ram into your vehicle uh, without any indication so it should illuminate as soon as you activate the brake even a single uh, uh, like a minute uh, pressure on the brake lever or the brake pedal should activate the brake light it is not uh, required that only when the brakes are completing is then only the light should illuminate as soon as you activate it the brake mechanism the the brake light should turn on and the height uh, should be between 350 to 1500 mm and it should be behind the vehicle uh, and uh, the light should be visible uh, horizontally and it should be visible up to 10 meters so if i stand 10 meter behind your uh, any cycle and you apply the brakes then it should be clearly distinguished that the brake light is turned on so standard oem light which are available in market which are rated which are compliant to some regulations can be used you can see the marking when you are purchasing the brake lights so simple red color brake light should be used and uh, for advanced category it is mandatory and uh, if any uh, conventional category person uh, the vehicle is using brake light then the brake light should be turned on in the brake test so this can be checked whether it is completely working or not in the panic braking condition then another mandatory item is the turn indicator turn indicators are uh, used to indicate the vehicle uh, intended motion uh, in the left or right so normally uh, in every vehicle there are two turn indicators uh, in front for left and right and two indicators in rear for uh, uh, left and uh, right indication and uh, these are amber in color additionally you might have seen in some vehicles especially in cars uh some vehicle are coming with the uh, indicators available on rear view mirrors or uh, maybe on uh, uh, some other places also so that uh, the persons uh, coming from behind or from the front or from side should uh, know the intention of your motion in coming moments so as soon as you decide to turn you should turn on the indicator so that the person can avoid any accident or any collision with your vehicle so the amber color uh, which is the standard color for turn indicators in every vehicle you can find the same color indicators are used so you also need to use same amber color indicators and uh, uh, they should be applied on front and rear both so you need totally four lights and uh, for same side indicators same flash light flash rate so normally the flash frequency or the flash rate is 90 plus minus 30 minutes so from 60 to 120 flash per minute is allowed so this is the uh, actually the mandatory requirement in indian uh, regulations for all vehicles so we apply the same for fe cycle as well and uh, you can give some uh, small lever type of switch toggle switches push button or a rotary type switch for indicating left or right in uh, actuation so these can be used and uh, they should be mounted from uh, 350 to 1500 mm height and the lateral distance between two indicators so two indicators means the indicator for left and indicator for right so the lateral distance should be at least 800 mm so that they can be easily identified as a left indicator and right indicator they should not be attached uh, adjacent to each other or uh, so that uh, uh, like in this situation there will be a confusion whether the right indicator is on or the left indicator is on so the distance min minimum distance is given as 800 mm from the center it should be symmetrically placed uh, that means from the center 400 each side one uh, updated requirement for turn indicator for advanced uh, vehicle is they there should be some mechanism so that the same indicators can be used as the hazard lamp uh, you might have observed in your uh, cars four wheelers there are there is some hazard button 
uh, inside the vehicle cockpit on the dashboard there is one uh, button with the red triangle like this so this is uh, called the hazard button and uh, this is in the triangular form so hazard means uh, both indicator will be on simultaneously uh, so that they give us a indication of some emergency or the vehicle is stopping vehicle is uh, facing some difficulty some abnormal behavior and uh, it is an emergency so it's kind of warning light some people also call it parking light but that is not a correct word uh, parking means uh, whenever you try to stop your vehicle on the road uh, somewhere which is not a intended place to park or uh, stop uh, maybe road side uh, where the space is narrow so people also used to turn on that uh, and so it is understood as the vehicle is standing so that's why they are uh, uh, named as parking light also but the correct word is the hazard lamp hazard warning light or hazard light then next is uh, the requirement for battery level indicator uh, uh, which gives the health uh, not exactly health the charge status of your battery so in the bms uh, sometime the charge uh, indicators are available which gives you the indication uh, but if it is not available in your bms it should be uh, made by yourself uh, to know the charge level so there are different type of uh, uh, options given uh, here so at least four levels are required so four level means uh, the fully charged medium charge uh, low charge or uh, you can say another one is uh, not able to use or the or the completely discharge condition similarly uh, some uh, bars can be used so minimum four level can be there or uh, you can make it uh, six level eight level like in the second picture it is shown as uh, to by 10 10 levels are shown on the rightmost picture you can see uh, the percentage is given as uh, you can see the percentage in your mobile battery same kind of uh, display is there which gives the label as well as the percentage so you know uh, how much charge you are having so i think this is the best condition uh, if you have it so that you can always estimate uh, at any time any point of time in the endurance that this much charge is available another one is uh, having some percentage defined like 10% 60% or 100% so some uh, ICs are available with LEDs in the market which can be used directly for uh, this thing so try to find a good uh, uh, IC of the circuit and uh, try to implement your basic electronics knowledge to implement this battery level indicator then one more requirement is a USB charging port and a smartphone holder as we want to make the happy cycle as a very user friendly vehicle so this is one of the necessary requirement that people uh, use smartphone and while traveling they may like to put it on charging so one usb charging port should be available and a smartphone holder should also be there so normally smartphone holders are available in the market so you can use that also but that should be completely rigid and it should not be coming out Uh, every time due to the vibration shocks or uh, uh, maybe other uh, uh, mishandling unintended touch uh, like conditions so and usb ports should have a power supply of uh, i'm sorry it is written 12 volt but it is actually the 12 volt supply just give me a minute yes so usb charging port now you can see the screen so you can see i have corrected it and uh, usb ports are uh, they normally provide 5 volt supply so 5 volt supply should be available and 
uh, it can be from the battery so you need to put some kind of converters to uh, convert or to degrade the voltage level from 12 volt of battery to 5 volt at the usb port so normally usb port on your laptops also or in normal cars also they have 5 volt supply only so try to implement some kind of circuit in between and measure that it is always giving 5 volt supply and uh, then you can use some kind of uh, usb cable uh, according to your smartphone charging port and uh, uh, the charging po phone can be the the smartphone can be uh, put on the, the holder which is a quick release type which are commonly available in the market so please try to use that another mandatory item is power grip paddles power grip paddles are uh, nothing but uh, the paddles which are uh, holding your uh, foot uh, so that uh, whenever you are rotating at a very high speed or uh, due to some uh, uh, some uh, bumps or uh, something which is unintended so you do not uh, lose the grip of uh, lose the hold of your paddle uh, from the foot so power grip paddle are coming with a strap which is uh, uh, shown here and uh, these are available uh, in the market they are used in uh, some of the racing uh, bicycles and uh, you can also find it uh, in different online uh, shopping portals and uh, this is how on the right side you can see how you use it so shoes is uh, shoes are uh, fixed inside the strap and uh, now when you rotate you need not to worry about slipping of foot over the paddles so this this grips you more grips and uh, you can uh, uh, without any uh, uh, thought or without any uh, worry you can uh, use paddles at very high speed and uh, give more output to the power train and let's discuss about some specific item which are made as uh, mandatory for uh, advanced ap cycle in 2020 season so basically there are three type of items i will discuss uh, each of them one by one so one is the battery charging through non conventional methods and uh, there are two options given one is through energy regeneration system and uh, second option is through solar charging so you need to uh, select one which is uh, most convenient and uh, most efficient so you can uh, 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 discuss the pros and cons of both uh, while deciding which one you will go with and uh, solar charging uh, is also having their own advantages and disadvantages because you need to buy a solar panel which is a little costly but uh, on the Uh, other side it is very easy to use only you need to one time procure it and uh, mount it somewhere uh, where you can have the maximum daylight and normally for the calculation purpose you consider uh, only 4 hours of daylight so all the calculation for solar charging should be given for 4 hours of daylight only uh, we have not specified anything for uh, solar panel size mounting requirement because we want teams to um, calculate their own requirement rather than uh, uh, we putting it in the in the rule book uh, so you should calculate for example uh, the team may decide that uh, we will uh, uh, use the less capacity battery uh, just for an example i am taking some figures for example uh, you find out that uh, uh, 35 ampere hour is not Uh, enough for the entire endurance run so then you uh, will be having the charging from solar or ers any one of them so if you are opting uh, solar charging solar panel method then you calculate uh, how much extra charge you need then there can be some uh, further steps like uh, how much uh, time it takes to charge a certain amount of uh, uh, ah level Uh, for example if it is uh, 
giving you five years in one hour, then you can calculate that uh, after adding uh, a solar panel, if you are consuming all 35 ampere hour in uh, one hour, then additionally after one hour you will also get five AH. So that way you can calculate your uh, solar panel size. So solar panel size uh, gives you a direct uh, uh, value like uh, for a particular size of solar panel this much charge will be available but there are certain some calculations made for it uh, considering the efficiency also uh, and the charging discharging rate of your battery also so battery are also having the charging and discharging rate which is called the c rate c rating c rating the battery in charging c rating for discharging so these are also uh, important factor which you should take care. So all these calculations you make and then only you decide how much solar panel size you need. And uh, there can be one other condition uh, if you want to reduce the weight and you find out that uh, you need only uh, just again randomly I am so taking some, uh, some uh, uh, numerical values for explanation. For example, if you find out that for one and a half hour uh, endurance or a two hour endurance, uh, two hour endurance you need only uh, 25 ampere hour then you may try to go even below that you can only put uh, 20 ampere hour if you find out that after one hour you get additional uh, or one and a half hour you can get additional 5 ampere hour so it's not like after one hour only you will get that amount of charge accumulated but it will be continuous charging uh, so somehow you have to represent it so that's why i'm saying that after in a one hour you will get additional 5 ampere hour so you can even reduce the capacity of your battery uh, than the actual requirement. So that in that uh, situation, you will reduce the weight of uh, your vehicle and increase the power to weight ratio, which will ultimately give you more acceleration and more uh, uh, convenience in all the dynamic events. Similarly for the ERS, so ERS also uh, is a system which is a little uh, complicated but if you make it with some innovative uh, uh, method so like uh, the wheels rotation or the motor retardation can be used as a charging mechanism so in that way you can uh, uh, use the uh, ERS also effectively so this is uh, the explanation of uh, using the non-conventional charging mechanism for uh, your battery charging. So as I explained uh, that you can reduce the battery size uh, by uh, making some proper calculations because uh, the weight reduction will become surely a requirement because when you are putting this uh, these systems either ERS or solar you will be putting some more weight so somehow you would like to compensate also so in that way you can uh, reduce uh, weight that is uh, uh, some explanation on this you may study some more things on how to make these systems and how to calculate the uh, the requirements or the charging uh, uh, related thing so I would not explain much on that part on the calculation part uh, but whatever calculation you make, uh, you need to make a circuit diagram for it and you need to show a proper uh, calculation uh, to the judges so that they can evaluate the level of uh, work which you have done. So this is one of the requirement uh, which is newly put into the uh, FE cycle uh, 2020 advanced category. And uh, Second uh, requirement is uh, for the infotainment. Uh, infotainment, there are three options. You need to put any one of them. Uh, one is the music system. Uh, and uh, if, if you don't like it, you can go for the hands-free smartphone connection. And uh, otherwise, if you, you have third option, display screen or displaying the content of your uh, phone or playing some kind of uh, uh, audio or visual things on the screen. So any of the three according to your choice, cost, availability of material, your knowledge level you can choose to put uh, in your vehicle. So any one of them is required. I will discuss uh, some more details uh, 
so the details are given in the rule book also uh, so from the rule book i can uh, tell you for the music system you need to uh, have a system with a speaker where uh, in the speaker you can display uh, sorry not display uh, you can play uh, some music uh, songs uh, with the usb connection with your phone or through the usb devices like pen drive uh, or through the bluetooth connection with your phone uh, and uh, uh, some compact disc kind of thing from the radio or any other connectivity but your uh, music system should be present in the vehicle uh, so it should have some uh, device to play and uh, a speaker to provide you the sound so a speaker should be also selected as per uh, the uh, logical thinking that uh, the speaker should not be very very loud enough we don't want uh, you to put a very bulky or very loud or very heavy speaker just a small um speakers which give you a uh, good amount of sound good uh, decibel or uh, good level of sound with, within the vehicle outside the vehicle uh, it should not be much loud so only one speaker can also be put if, if you if you are, are not uh, requiring much louder speaker only one speaker of a small power can be put second option is the hands free smartphone connection hands free smartphone connection is required uh, that uh, whenever you are driving you need not to talk to the other person over phone because anyways uh, talking on uh, phone on mobile uh, while driving is uh, not legal in india so as uh, the systems are available in the car Uh, we would al- also like to have implemented in the ep cycle so the voice calls can be attended uh, uh, with the hands free connection like it is available in the cars normally you put a bluetooth or uh, you use some kind of uh, android or uh, ios apps for connecting your phone with your uh, infotainment system in a car and uh, it is for two way communication so that means the mic should be available and the speaker should also be available so the use of phone can all, only be your smartphone use can only be uh, done only for dialing the calls or accepting the calls so for example if you want to make a phone call to your friend you can use uh, the mobile phone to dial it and then uh, the hands free connection should be available when you speak it should go uh, to the infotainment system and uh, it should be received by other person and also the other person's voice should be clearly audible without any interruptions or without any background noise so you, you need to control your uh, uh, infotainment system's uh, noise and uh, for that purpose uh, for the uh, for using the uh, this type of uh, infotainment you can use uh, key touch buttons or uh, some voice command related operations uh, so that should be available in a advanced ep cycle uh, even if some kind of voice uh, noise are available uh, but uh, these are not interrupting and uh, the voice quality is good enough uh, to understand uh, what other person is saying then we will allow some kind of noise uh, for the first time maybe we would like to improve it in the later seasons uh, next time and the third option is the display screen uh, display screen is something which uh, is uh, some kind of uh, screen which uh, is uh, allowed to display uh, the multimedia things and a minimum 4 inches uh, display size can be utilized and uh, this screens can be powered by the vehicle battery itself and uh, you can also put some kind of touch controls and uh, any preloaded uh, content can be played and uh, you can also connect it with your smartphones and uh, disk or usb so that uh, the display screen provides you uh some kind of uh, uh, multimedia over there 
and uh, let's move to the other system which is adas system uh, adas is uh, advanced driver assistance system so adas uh, will have uh, six categories of uh, items uh, out of which you need to implement any two any two are okay so one of them is cyclo computer speed alert system and then reverse parking assist adjustable headlamp driving range information and seat belt reminders so you can try to uh, uh, pick uh, any one of them uh, sorry any two of them uh, so that you get 50 marks each for uh, two system total 100 marks so cyclo computers are uh, some devices which are uh, uh, used to tell the current speed average speed of the vehicle the trip distances and total distance uh, traveled time also and uh, they are having the digital display so basically cyclo computer is a device or you uh, it is also called cyclometer which is having two parts one is the display and second is the sensor so i have displayed both of them here in the slide so in the bottom picture you can see uh, there is some black uh, part mounted on the frame and uh, this is actually counting the rotation of uh, the wheel so according to that it, it converts uh, these all parameters into the actual uh, display which is required in terms of the speed or uh, distance so these are available on online uh, portals or uh, on the uh, shops uh, which sells the accessories for uh, racing uh, bicycles so you can use that but one precaution should be give uh, taken care that uh, cyclo computer should be calibrated according to the mounting location in your wheel so that uh, you will find in the instructions or on the some uh, kind of videos which are available on internet or in the product uh, catalog so try to refer that we are moving towards the end only but i would like to explain uh, other radar systems also one by one very quickly and one speed alert system is required so a speed alert system is actually a warning system which gives the warning when your vehicle speed reaches above the 20 5 km per hour so for that purpose you can take a feedback of cyclo computer itself uh, or a gps based system or any other system ultimately you need a signal or a warning uh, in terms of uh, uh, the display warning or uh, audible audio warning like beep 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 or something like that so ultimately you have to take some input from uh, the vehicle about the speed and you have to display some warning and uh, third one is the reverse parking assist i am quickly going through it, uh, it so if you have any question you can ask in the question answer box reverse parking is assist is something which uh, tells you uh, the distance of of obstacles or the presence of something behind your uh, vehicle because you are not able to view it by yourself so something should be available uh, to assist you in the reverse parking mode so there are some sensors available uh, if you remember we had a session uh, by miss nista aroda uh, from she is working in tcs we had a webinar series uh, from 28 to 31st may there she explained about all these systems the ultrasonic sensor proximity sensors like that lidar radar so that session was very very useful uh, and uh, the people who have attended that might be uh, having the knowledge of uh, these sensors somehow uh, so there we explained like how these sensors can be used for all these systems in fe cycle so basically the requirement is that uh, the obstacle within a monitoring range should be informed to the drivers in terms of similar 
kind of uh, warning like a speed uh, which we used for a speed alert system so similar audio warning or uh, uh, visual warning can be given there and uh, i would recommend to keep uh, both identification separate so whatever warning you are giving so for each type of warning like whether it is seat belt reminder whether it is reverse parking or advance uh, oh, sorry speed alert so the type of warning uh, in terms of the audio and uh, visual both it should be identified so that it is not always the same level of a uh, uh, same type of warning like a, a beep 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 and again uh, a seat belt reminder is also given giving a beep 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 so you are not able to identify uh, the beep is for uh, speed alert or for the reverse parking or for something else so try to identify the uh, warning uh, types and uh, for the reverse parking assist or r pass r p a s the monitoring range shall be within 0.2 meter to 1 meter in a horizontal plane from the vehicle rear most surface so any object within 0.2 meter to 1 meter should be identified easily and uh, you can use some kind of sensors or even the camera like the cameras are available in vehicles which gives the clear view of something so this is the best way to check whether the object is uh, 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 a sharp object or a pole or something like a uh, concrete block or wall or if somebody else somebody person uh, human being is standing behind it so camera can also be used like that and uh, then next is the adjustable headlamps so adjustable headlamp is uh, required uh, to illuminate the road surface when the vehicle is uh, turning so as the vehicle turns as you uh, rotate your steering so the lamp should also rotate so either it can be uh, uh, taking input from the steering control or maybe through other uh, sensor so the level of beams can also be adjusted and uh, angle of uh, beam should also be adjustable so it should be left to right or front to uh, uh, bottom to up vertically or horizontally and uh, then you can uh, use you need to provide the driving range information also so driving range information is uh, uh, distance uh, which your vehicle can travel in the existing charge of battery so that means uh, just like you are having uh, uh, 95% of the battery 5% is consumed so in that level of charge how many kilometer you can travel so that information can be collected and uh, can be displayed so this is one of the requirement and logical calculations and algorithm should be presented to the judges so to check the accuracy of your system and then one last item which is required is the seat belt reminder seat belt reminder is uh, uh, again a warning which uh, tells you that uh, you have not fastened your seat belts as a uh, uh when as soon as you put on the put turn on the electric drive actually seat belt reminder is uh, made uh, to give you a warning when the vehicle starts a travel and it has run just a very short distance or uh, it has attained some speed or it has been driving for a uh, few seconds but uh, that needs a lot of complicated algorithms uh, so if you are able to make it then okay otherwise you can simply take a input from the electric drive as soon as it is turned on and ready to run then only the vehicle should identify whether the person is sitting over there and not wearing the seat belt so it needs two level of uh, sensing first the occupancy sensing if somebody is sitting then the system should be activated when the belts are not fastened it should not give a signal when the person is not sitting so you need to uh, have two level of uh, sensing so the the 
seat belt reminder which gives all time signals even if the person is not sitting then they will not be accepted so actually uh, for all these uh, display and uh, controls uh, like you need a control of uh, indicators lamps and also you need to uh, display of input element and all these warnings so i will recommend to have a kind of a dashboard or some kind of control panel uh, in front of uh, the driver just like the dashboard is uh, or an instrument panel is given in the passenger cars so that way uh, you can mount all these controls and display in that dashboard and uh, also i will uh, give you some uh, tips on this uh, basically you can have a the common system which uh, solve both the purpose uh, and uh, there are multiple type of combinations which you can make for example if you provide a display screen in that in that same display screen you can uh, play the infotainment uh, items also you can play music also you can use gps also you can use uh, uh, you can uh, display the driving range information or uh, cyclo computer data and uh, that can also be used for uh, displaying the reverse parking uh, uh, I, uh, like uh, the the portion behind your vehicle when you are in the reverse mode so in this way you reduce number of components to solve the purpose we are not asking you to de define uh, or provide uh, the items separately for each and everything but ultimately the vehicle should solve the purpose similarly if you are having the cyclo computer you can have the speed alert or the driving range information calculated from that so this way you have uh, some kind of warning through that you need to define it which system is doing what uh, activities and uh, for uh, battery level charging also can be displayed on the screen so similarly you can play with the combinations to uh, avoid multiple components and to avoid a lot of investment into it and uh, i hope this will be very beautiful uh, very beautifully place all these systems into your uh, epi cycle so now uh, this is all about uh, the rule book vehicle requirement related portion uh, so if you have any queries uh, now you can post it i will also check q and a box uh, with the queries uh, published into the q and a box and uh, for further queries you can write to uh, the technical committee on epicycle.technical at the rate sanis.org Uh, for rule book and other information you can visit our website so these are the qr codes uh, for our different social media handles you can use that and uh, try to uh, ask your uh, queries and uh, yes yeah, so now i will move to the q and a box Sonu Kumar from Team ID twenty thousand seven is asking: Questions are compulsory or not? Questions are not compulsory, but if you provide a seat, how you are going to provide a comfort to your driver? So that is up up to you. The most common uh, uh, method is to provide some kind of padding or uh, cushions. so the drivers are uh, not feeling uh, any hard surface uh, on the back and uh, the bottom otherwise uh, uh, i have shown some pictures to you uh, where they use a wire mesh so that is a, all, again a flexible kind of thing which is supporting them ultimate aim is to provide the comfort to driver so cushions are not compulsory by the rules but uh, by a common logic you will need something flexible for human body Akash Krishna Deep from 20,052 is asking: Is the front and back movement of the seat necessary if they are placed adjacently? Uh, I have never used uh, any uh, 
terms like mandatory for uh, these type of systems and nor it is written in the rule book that you have to uh, mandatorily provide these systems these are up to your choice so any adjustment systems are not mandatory even in the uh, slider or even in the feedback recliner abhishek from 2051 is asking how will we design cad for motor if we are a new team not knowing the exact shape of motor uh abhishek i hope you have not visited the website uh, the published information is available there in the download section there is a document with the name uh, motor information uh, document that was published one second all the dimensions of motors uh, and it weight and all the specifications are available over there please go through that document vikhyat from 20005 is asking how to calculate the seat back angle this is uh, the seat back angle it is very very simple measurement you have to see how much angle the seat back is having from the vertical priyanshu from 20 uh, 50 20053 in uh, is asking in page 72 it is written only lithium and battery allowed is it for transmission only or we have to use lithium ion for other electrical peripheral also lithium ion batteries are mandatory for advanced category vehicles for the drive train purpose only for the electrical drive train in advanced hybrid and advanced electric vehicles you can use only lithium ion batteries vikram kumar from 20007 asking please describe flash rate frequency um uh you can check the cars and uh, motor bikes uh, when you turn on the indicator they are not continuously on they are blinking they are on and off on and off and it is done at a certain rate so that rate only is called the flash frequency for turn indicator so from uh, the rule book you can uh, identify the flash rate is given as uh, 90 per minute 90 flashes per minute uh, with a tolerance of 30 so 60 to 120 flashes per minute you can uh, fix for your turn indicators priyanshu from 20053 is again asking we are using u shaped handle bars they come closer to the chest while handling so 220 rule as mentioned on page 81 for steering control will be applicable as you only mentioned steering wheel and handle bars of cycle it is for everything it is for anything which is uh, there for steering operation whether it is u shape or circular shape or a handle or bar or anything uh, which is there for steering control for an advanced category vehicle that should always be away 220 mm from the driver's chest uh and again i will say that uh, even in the front most condition if you are having the sliding seats so in the front most condition also the rear most portion of steering control mechanism should not be within 220 mm it should be always uh, 220 mm away uh Bharat from 20050 is asking what kind of file we have to submit for EDA system. Uh, this is very strange. Uh, I hope you have not gone through the documentation package released on the website. So visit there. There is one advanced technology report which you have to prepare. Then in the physical vehicle, it will be checked in the physical event as per the advanced technology report. and uh, 
the working of all radar's features will be checked according to the parameters and the details given in that report. Nitin Rathod from 20,042 uh, is asking, uh, this is the last query which is published in Q&A section. If you have any query, please uh, post it. Otherwise, just after this query, we will close this session. So Nitin Rathod from 20,042 is asking, when a steering handle is used, then in that condition, if driver take a turn left, and uh, or right at that time also distance from end of handle and chest must be greater than 220 mm is it like that or it will be considered only at the static condition i already explained this rule uh, in the previous query so i hope this is already answered if there is any query uh, you can now ask by sending email to technical committee or through your mentors so we, we have finish the explanation of the rule book uh, uh, section B, which is the vehicle re related requirement and design and safety related requirement prescribed for the vehicles. And uh, tomorrow we will have discussion on uh, the documentation package. So as we discussed uh, in uh, last sessions that documentation formats are uh, changed. Some of them are uh, as it is, some are of them are changed so tomorrow we will explain how you need to prepare a document how the evaluations will be taking place and uh, what are the tips and tricks for uh, getting good marks in the evaluations and um, this will be discussed in detail tomorrow and uh, today we have uh, finished everything related to vehicle requirements so i would like to call off this session thank you everyone for attending and uh, thank you all the session coordinators and moderate moderators from uh, KIT for coordinate, coordinating this session. Thank you all mentors who have joined this session. Uh, wish you a good night and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.